Let's take a look at some um, different things about the female anatomy, not just the structure. So the next set of videos is going to show you tubal ligations and basically um, they animate it really well. So I'm not going to say too much as they put, basically put gas in here and then they're going to cut both of those. So the next set of videos that you see will go over that uh, more. Now here's another, um, remember I told you that if you're young enough you could probably um, donate some eggs, is I'm showing you how you go to donate the eggs, is they stimulate your ovaries to secrete a lot of eggs and then they go in and, and um, suction them out. This next one is about endometriosis and I posted up a video for you um, that explains more about the endometriosis under um, and so I feel like the video will tell you more that it's showing that the uterine tissue has grown onto the ovary right here so this is an ovary and the uterine tissue is there and they're not quite sure why that happens now here's another something that happens to females that we don't quite understand is they can develop cysts. So some of you might have developed cysts on your hands or your eyes or some part of your body and we just don't understand why. But um, if they say you have a cyst on your ovaries, sometimes they're worried that oh it may cause infertility, they're not 100% sure. But this is what um, a cyst on your ovary would look like. Okay, I want to go on to menstruation. And I don't want to go into the ins and outs of the menstruation because it's very complicated and I feel like there's so much in this chapter already to learn. And we're still going to go over the male diseases after this. So. I feel like this chapter is a little bit overwhelming and knowing like what all the different hormones that are released at different times is I don't think that's something that we really need to focus on. So I have just the basics here. Okay, so menstruation is the breakdown of the uterine lining. So I told you that each month um, the uterus is uh, building up in preparation for a baby. And that's a whole synchronization of different hormones releasing and so on and so forth. It usually occurs on a 28 day cycle um, and what causes the release of the blood is uh, low levels of estrogen. And so when you're taking the birth control pill, what's happening is, is they're giving you high, higher dose, uh, doses of estrogen that are a little bit higher and then it will simulate a fake period. So the egg won't be released by taking the high levels of estrogen. Uh, it's kind of making your body feel as if you're pregnant so the egg won't be released. And then in order to have a menstrual period, then uh, you take the sugar pills or the iron pills or no pills at all. And that will lower the estrogen levels enough to have kind of a fake period. But most of the time, a period is releasing an unfertilized egg, but the egg was never released with birth control. So I'd like you to know about ovulation occurring on day 14. So seeing that thing, a lot of you might be going, well, what, is, what does day 14 mean? And what day 14 means is day one is the first day of your menstrual period. So the moment that you start bleeding, you uh, would count to day 14 and that would probably be around the time that you're ovulating. So there's natural family planning birth control methods where you miss, where you abstain from sex uh, during days 9 to day 17. So the reason why you're stopping so early, like on day nine, is because the sperm can live inside of the body for up to 72 hours. I've seen other places that they say longer. So I'm just, I think that they're not 100% sure how long sperm can live. And there also might be a variety of factors that determine that. Now here's something else that's super interesting, but maybe a little gross to some of you, is the cervical mucus can tell us whether or not we're um, ovulating or not. So your mucus is different colors and different textures at different times of the month. So sometimes in the month it's kind of white and creamy. 
And then other times of the month, it's kind of rubbery, like you can play with it in your fingers. Haha. <laughs> and then other times it's very clear and slippery. So the clear and slippery that you see down in your underwear or something like that would be indicate the mucin strands. So when the when a woman is ovulating, her cervix actually releases these things called mucin strands, and this is a channel that the sperm can swim up to keep away from the acidity of the vagina. So looking at your mucus is another way that you can um, tell if you're ovulating or not. Now you can't mistake um, when you're vaginally lubricated from sexual arousal and the clear slippery uh, that happens when you're just going about your normal day. They're two different things. So sexual arousal produces vagina sweat, as a matter of fact. So your vagina is actually sweating and that's what the lubrication is. But I'm talking about if you're not even sexually aroused and you see the clear and slippery, it's probably a good sign that you might be ovulating. There's one other way to tell that you're ovulating and that is um, by uh, your temperature. Remember how the sperm temperature, sex cells need a lower body temperature. So if you go in the aisle like a Vons or wherever, Rite Aid, wherever you buy your um, birth control kind of substances, uh, your protection devices. A lot of times if you look up top or maybe on the bottom, you'll see something called a basal thermometer. And what you do with this basal thermometer is you take your temperature every morning before you get out of bed. And you, you'll see right before ovulation there'll be a dip because the sex cells need a slightly uh, cooler environment to survive in. So basically there's three ways that people use of natural family planning methods. They count the days, the calendar method, and they don't have sex between days 9 and 17. Also they look at their cervical mucus, and then they can also use the temperature. Now what I'm going to do after I show you this, after this is, is I'd like to show you some facial changes from ovulation and then another video about how we are different when we're ovulating. So not only does our face change when we're ovulating, but they have found that strippers make more money when they're ovulating. We women, we tend to wear brighter clothes and clothes that show off our figure more when we're ovulating. Isn't that interesting? So let's go take a look at that. 